uh, Ismail, I think we're ready to get started. So uh, let me do the kickoff. So um, welcome, everybody. Good afternoon or maybe good evening, good morning, wherever you are in, in the world. This is another Crypto Wednesday show. Uh, me co-hosting together with my friend Gordon Einstein, uh, who just reminded me it was a little bit more than half a year ago when we started. So let's say, say somewhere in 2020, we took the initiative because we have a lot of mutual industry friends and we said, you know, let's get the group, the community together as a good professional network once a week or, you know, we, we, we try to do it once a week and, and share insights, share where we are, uh, new projects and so forth and so forth. And this is what we've been doing. There's a lot of recording on great shows that we already did. And there are some co coming on that are also really good in the upcoming weeks. And um, all those recordings are on our YouTube channel. So if you're not subscribed, please subscribe the uh, Crypto Wednesday show YouTube channel. Thanks for that. But today I'm really excited because I had a chat with, with Gordon just the other day. And I said, you know, we need to get some of my friends involved who I've been in contact with for the last couple of years. And we, we meet it up. We met up at a, at a previous project, which is about to list, but maybe we'll uh, say about something that a little bit later on. But I met up with Jürgen a couple of years ago. I think it was one of the blockchain shows in London. I think that was the first time, Jürgen, right? Yeah. Where you were you were one of the, the key speakers. And via FIA, I ended up with that project that, that, uh, that we were both involved with. And I uh, ended up in Singapore at one of the shows. And one of my... Uh, investor relations friends, Ian Taylor, he said, you know, I need to introduce you to this guy, Alexis. I said, who's Alexis? And he told me about Alexis. So I was happy to, to meet Alexis back then. So we were all, we became industry friends. And I said, you know, let's get them in the show because I think a lot of people heard about you or joined one of your opportunities or one of your lessons or whatever. So normally what, what we do, and I like, like to start with Alexis is, uh, for everybody that's watching the live recording or is watching the YouTube channel, Alexis, tell us a little bit on who you are. Why, why did you get involved in the industry? Um, yeah, g give us a little background. So um, originally I'm a software engineer. That's what I studied and that's what I still consider myself, even though I can't do any much code. And um, after some failed uh, startups, you know, we, I think it was the fifth, uh, well, I worked in the European Space Center. I was uh, uh, working for space rockets, Ariane 5. And then after some, uh, after that, I, I tried some startups and I failed a few times. And I think on the fifth time, on the fifth go, uh, it, we, we co-founded a successful startup. Uh, it's one of the leading market makers today. It's called GSR. And... Uh, I, I exited most of my position in GSR in 2018 and I founded Yellow and yellow.com. And uh, so in yellow.com, we're building like a next uh, generation exchange, you know, and we, we partnered with uh, one of the industry leaders for exchange software, which we ended up uh, merging. So I invited the CEO Louis as well. So Openware is powering today over 50%, but sometimes I would say like 80% of all exchanges in the world uh, are using our open source software. And uh, many, many resellers, many other white label exchange providers are actually using our open source uh, software. And um, we ended up merging with uh, Openware and um, they have a great experience uh, building exchanges. They have many very cool exchanges that you all know that are running our our software. Maybe eToro is one of our famous clients. Wow. Uh, and uh, I'm sure you you know many of the other clients probably as well. Um, we do, so we have, I think about 50 software engineers uh, working. And uh, the project I have been most focusing on is um, Yellow, yellow.com, so which is an upcoming exchange and marketplace, a little bit like nothing you have seen before, uh, really bringing uh, trading and democrat, uh, demo, making trading democratic, you know, like allowing normal people to, to trade and to go into, into exchanges. And it's not only an exchange uh, because we, we don't want to put all our clients out of business either. So we're actually 
building a sort of meta exchange as well, where, where we have a marketplace where we are bringing all the services from all the industry. So not only exchanges, but also like all these aggregators like CoinMarketCap or CoinGecko and marketing agencies and legal. And so we'll have a marketplace of services for everybody in the industry that we have developed. And it's pretty awesome market makers. Uh, so the idea is a bit like Amazon that earns a fee uh, putting in relationship because it's very, very difficult. You know, you, you launch a new token project, mm -hmm. you want to do marketing in Korea, you know, so how, 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 who is, who is doing marketing in Korea? Nobody knows. So the ecosystem is today a chaos and we're bringing it together in yellow.com. I think everybody will, will really, really like it. I think it's going to launch hopefully in one month, yeah, Louis, or this month or next month, you know, it's, uh, we've been, we've been working about two years on it. It's not so simple. There's many technicalities, uh, even though we have deployed over 50 ourselves, mm -hmm. maybe we have deployed over 50 standard exchanges, but this exchange is like something different, you know, it's like comparing Uber and just like normal taxi drivers. So this is like a next generation of, of exchange and I we think that people will like it. Um, coincidentally, um, CZ from Binance was also building exchange software I read the other day and then he decided to build his own exchange. Uh, I was a market maker uh, on one side and we was building exchanges and I think we're a really good team. You know, we have like most of the exchanges are using our software. Uh, the, the company I co-founded is the leading market maker today in the space. So I think like between the two of us, we're going to do like something that is really going to blow everybody's mind, hopefully. And this is the surprise. We're doing an ICO probably for it next uh, month or so. Uh, it's, it's really, it's something that also doesn't really, really exist. You know, like it's uh, maybe we can later explain more about, uh, about our ICO, you know, but you know, we're like, mm -hmm. Is like groundbreaking blockchain technology using Polkadot and using like we have built-in escrow and we have we have a lot of partners. We hope it's going to be the hottest ICO because I haven't seen any hot ICOs except Casper that I really like and I didn't get in. Except mm -hmm. Casper, I haven't really seen any cool ICOs in two years. So let's hope that we're successful. We haven't told anybody. You're the first guys that we're telling that we're doing an ICO because... You heard it out here on Crypto Wednesdays first. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> we haven't told anybody. Even most of our staff, they don't even know. You know, it's like a secret inside project. But we thought, well, this is a very private group. Recorded on YouTube to millions of viewers. But hopefully not too many people know about this. And uh, yeah, so I think uh, you're really going to like it. I'm really happy, Alexis, that you took this opportunity and this platform, this audience to to sp <laughs> spread the spread the word. And I really would like to to have Louis also uh, diving into the the ICO and where you are on the on the roadmap. But before we do that, let's first go to our to our second guest and one of my good friends also, which is Jurgen Hubert. So Her Jurgen, good afternoon. How are you? Hello. Good afternoon. Good evening for me, and good evening for some other people. Yeah, uh, my name is Jürgen. I'm in the crypto space since 2014. Uh, fi to be honest, didn't find it that much interesting in the beginning because everything was around Bitcoin and it was too less for me, just sending money from A to B. For me, the whole space got uh, really interesting when I read the white paper about Ethereum. Mm -hmm. And then basically, uh, how to explain it, back then, I found that like it, it was the kick for me, like clicking. This is like how the future internet will look like. Uh, yeah, you know, like you put some money into Ethereum, you didn't hear anything after for a year, then you got some token. And since then, it's basically a right. For me, it's like uh, a little bit background to my history, basically very untypical for that industry. I'm neither a programmer nor a banker. So I'm more like a product marketing, whatever guy you call that. My background is I did a BA in multimedia and design. And I have two master degrees, which are in a complete different area, like in the arts industry. So, which is funny. I also to own like NFT.art, which is kind of a nice domain I just bought. And uh, oh, wait, in the sorry, end, let, me, let me make sure I heard that. You got NFT.art? Yeah, it's my asset. That's clever. Yeah. No, yeah, no, basically. <laughs> sorry? I should have bought that. Oh, well. 
Glad you got it. I'm a little bit longer in that space, so <laughs> in the NFT space, to be honest. Uh, and for me, it's basically how to be clear. Uh, sometimes you are ahead of the time. And I think uh, in this industry, you normally get rewarded to be ahead of the time. There is a saying among people, when Jürgen bought a token and selling it, then you have to buy it. So <laughs> between my investment friends, that's like the most funniest compliment I'm always getting. Right. Uh, yeah, for me, uh, I was involved in the traditional startup ecosystem uh, like before uh, 2017. Like I did my own traditional startup, which we sold. Uh, we were like working for another startups, working with startups in startups, the, the whole thing, building basically the ecosystem up in Austria. Hmm. Uh, also, do like the, they call me the grandfather of this Austrian startup initiative because it was back then, like how to explain that, like, let's assume it like this, how you're starting here out as a small community. But uh, this thing was always built to live on its own. So at a certain time when I left Austria, I gave it basically into the wild. And in the meantime, it's just like a proper organization which likes, writes recommendations to the governments and uh, things like this. But that's like very local in Austria. Uh, for me, like when did I go full-time crypto? It was around 2016, 2017, where basically all my clients or everything which has nothing to do with blockchain or crypto, I basically faded out. And if someone was interested uh, to work with me and it has nothing to do with blockchain or crypto, I basically neglected to work on it. Uh, if you talk about blockchain and crypto, what things I'm interested in it, for me, it's like everything which is tokenization. And that has to be do starting from how to bring your bottles of wine to the to the blockchain, how to think even ahead. I mean, there are still big challenges. Like I can give an idea. So if you talk about now these to tokens like non-fungible tokens and fungible tokens, my assumption is that non-fungible tokens will be bigger than the whole fungible token space. So like the whole NFT space will be bigger. And for me, it's like, uh, to be honest, we are at the stage in this industry where I would consider it's at a level of uh, eight bit pictures, you know, like very simple graphics, which are like, so like this, a lot of things coming, which people can't even imagine. I mean, we see some ideas, but uh, you know, like this space is in one way, very good because it's self-sufficient because it has its own money machine, but also it comes with an advantage. I mean, I'm, most people maybe will uh, agree on this, we are now like literally since 10 years in that industry, MetaMask, I think is five year old and it's still the user interface is still a horror. So we are still not at that level where people are focusing on UX, UI because no one has to, you know what I mean? Because the money machine still works. For me, what uh, I'm not, I'm not a trader. I'm like, <laughs> I hate trading. Day trading is for me like, and charts reading is for me like, I don't understand it and I think it's just like if everyone believes the charts are working, then they're working and otherwise not. Uh, how would I describe myself? Yeah, company builder. I'm involved in a lot of companies where I have minor shares, uh, also do typical token buying and selling, uh, but much less than 2007. So I really like focus on things which are more long-term. Uh, I'm also too involved in something very new for me. Like, you know, you're coming from this whole crypto space and, uh, even I think most people don't know it. Like uh, I'm also involved now in a custody company, like where I'm like uh, one of the three co-founders, which will be regulated and everything, which is like for me a complete different area, <laughs> new challenges. Mm -hmm. But uh, to be honest, uh, I think there is a demand for this on the market, and certain uh, markets and and certain businesses need to uh, be a little bit more regulated. Yeah, that's short about me. Short is good question. And maybe, maybe Jürgen, can you explain a little bit on, on what your business relationship uh, with Alexis and Yellow is? Uh, what is my business relationship with Alexis and Yellow? Alexis, I think you said once I'm your cheapest employee. Was that the right answer? Can you remember that? No. <laughs> so he, I'd say he works part time because he gives us so much dedication and support that he's like our we can't get him full time because he has like all these people asking for him to help. But, you know, he is our token economics expert. If there, if I want to do any significant investment, I will ask him and he will usually go and invest together, you know? So it's like a win-win. He, yeah. he does the work and then he, he gets to invest. <laughs> so, 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 so
No, it, it, I, it's let, basically... I let him go with the big guys, and then he just uh, does a. Uh, he he goes quite big as well. He goes uh, about one tenth of what we do, so he goes quite big. But okay, uh, but Alexis investments is always very easy. So, how much money do you put in? Okay, I double that, or I put like X amount more. In. Like, so it's a very you know like if you do due diligence on projects. I mean, it's it's exactly the right thing. And uh, for me personally, I'm not liking to manage any OPM. So I'm not like to invest uh, other people's money. But if they follow what I do, they are free to do it, basically. Sure. You know, for, for, for an understanding. It's not a typical relationship, like as a, how do you call that? Like, like as an employee or something like this. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to call it, actually. Like, let's say this way, there are, are, are certain ideas and uh, things... Uh, which are shared. Uh, and sometimes I don't even understand the bigger pictures because <laughs> to be honest, yellow is a very big thing. And uh, if you're not fully involved always, like recently, you know, because of the whole bull run, I was distracted a little bit with other works. And then I'm coming back and then I'm seeing like Alexis and Louis, they are building this big vision. And I like was literally yesterday saying to one uh, employee, like, okay, I have to just like stand back and just, okay, follow up because I, I'm pretty sure uh, there's a bigger vision behind it. And I had it in the past. Sometimes it, you know, you, it needs time that you yourself understand the bigger vision of a project, for example. Yeah, yeah. sure. Maybe this is a good time, uh, Alexis, uh, for, for you to introduce also Louis into the conversation because you said you, you partnered up yep. with Louis. So when we merged with Openware, uh, Louis, who was CEO at Openware, he assumed the position of CEO for for Yellow and the whole Yellow group and Openware and uh, all these companies we have together. And we, you know, we merge and we say, you know, we, we go on everything together, whatever investment we do or whatever business line, we, we just go together as one. And we, we are quite complementary. He's uh, also a software engineer. So he's, uh, but we have very different mindsets. He's very product oriented and I'm more uh, results in future oriented and like uh, maybe I have the longer term vision and he's always like uh, so it's uh, we're almost like co-CEOs but he's a real CEO and that would be like CSO uh, strategy officer helping him and just uh, giving my advice uh, I really uh, and I mean he has like great experience he's built some of the 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 biggest sites that maybe Louis you can and we've had like re he's had like really good clients before cool Hi, Louis. Good afternoon or good yeah. evening. So, Louis, we'll, we'll, we'll get a lot more out of what you're saying if you're not on mute. We cannot hear you, but I think no. you're unmuted. Yeah, he's unmuted. He is unmuted. I don't know. We cannot hear you, Louis. You, you look very You're animated. Unmuted. That's a good sign. Louis, you need to unmute. You, we can't hear you. No, he's unmuted. Uh, I think his microphone is on the room. Or maybe as, as, as a proper geek, he's probably using Linux. <laughs> yes, that's the problem. Yeah, hundred percent. That's, 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 that's the problem. That's uh, you buy a Mac like everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> what about now? Yeah, yeah good. Good. hi. Good. Good. Uh, so thank you for the introduction. Um, I'm actually on my mobile because I cannot join from the laptop. So that's I why. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Cool. So uh, yes. Um, I'm really excited uh, with the work uh, we are doing right now with Alexi. Uh, it's a pleasure working with him and sharing the vision. Um, myself, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I started really young, probably my first startup, I was uh, 16 years old. And I never had another job than working for my own uh, startups. Um, and uh, throughout my career, I both did uh, very high tech things. Uh, so providing, let's say, uh, infrastructure for customer and security environment, uh, all the way to building social network and even dating websites. Mm. Uh, I've participated in a large projects, so I'm quite comfortable uh, handling traffic. And um, yellow is uh, an amazing opportunity where I can put uh, all everything I learned, all the mistakes I learned from in practice and uh, uh, build something very interesting. Um, and so throughout my career, I've seen internet evolving a lot. I would say, you know, I started, it was really 
uh, web 0.1. And uh, yeah, now I really feel we are in 3.0 and this is extremely exciting uh, what we are building today. So today I'm managing uh, both projects, uh, yellow.com and also we're doing enterprise services. So we're helping a lot of customer, for example, building their NFT platform, uh, their exchange, uh, we have cloud services, uh, and uh, we also have a school in Ukraine for blockchain and learning IT. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I do manage uh, a lot of the technical aspect, even though uh, I get my hands, I love to get my hands in marketing, uh, especially with the help of Jorgen. So we are working together on uh, sharpening the concept of yellow. And uh, this year is the unveiling of the project. Uh, so yes, stay tuned. You will, you, you will see. You will not be able to see the whole picture right away. Uh, but uh, the, the initial stage, uh, you, you should like it really much. And it's going to be uh, nothing like you have seen before. Hmm. The, uh, another question for you, Louis, and maybe Alex can add, because you mentioned something on the, the roadmap that you're almost ready to, to launch and there's an ICO coming up. What, what, what can you guys tell about that? So Yellow is already in production. Mm -hmm. um, this is in constant evolution. We are, we are updating in real time. The blockchain status is something I've been working on uh, probably since four years. Uh, and mostly based on tender mint work. Uh, but I've been following um, uh, Gavin and the Parity Tech work, and I've been closely looking at the evolution between tender mint, Cosmos, to Polkadot. And so I've been staying on the edge of the Polkadot uh, development activity, uh, reading their source code and trying all along. And today, the readiness of the yellow blo blockchain is imminent to start the main net. Mm -hmm. I would not say, I would not call it an ICO because we are not uh, raising funds for building the blockchain. Uh, we have uh, the capacity in software engineer. Uh, uh, honestly, um, as, as your non-legal advisor, I wouldn't use the term ICO even if you were doing an ICO. That's what Jorgen told me. So oh, There you go. You should listen, Jorgen. <laughs> We're doing a, a, a crypto IPO. How does that uh, You sound? definitely don't want to say that either. Well, 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 okay. <laughs> Why it's called the initial polka dot offering, or what is it called? I mean, yeah, the, yeah, that's, that's, polka really polka that, that's totally convincing. You're right, you won't get in trouble at all. You just go ahead and do that, <laughs> okay? Anyway, Louis, go, go ahead. So, I, I rely on uh, on uh, Jorgen advice when it comes to the, the form and the presentation, but I do consider that here, uh, we are um, industry expert, so we can. Keep using the word ICO, but uh, yes, the, the 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 main net coin uh, will be available for you to purchase uh, soon, and uh, this is uh, right away main net. So we're not going through Ethereum, through a test net. Uh, they're going to be uh, both uh, launch in parallel because Polkadot has great upgradability. And uh, I'm, I'm basing a lot of the work based on uh, uh, Moonbeam and uh, a, a project called Frontier uh, from Parity Tech. Yeah. So yeah. end of May, yeah. if you want a more precise. But, uh, but for reference, um, I even don't know that been, date. We have been working two years on yellow, but there's at least four years in front of us because like in the first version, you have like utility tokens, but we, we have everything in the roadmap. We have like uh, in-game digital assets, uh, loyalty points. Uh, uh, it's the other project I'm, I'm working with Sander and um, uh, non-fungible tokens, predictive markets, like is Trump going to win the elections in November or not? That was quite a cool one. And, and predictive markets is really cool because it's something my mother can understand to trade. Because if I tell my mother, what is the price of Bitcoin tomorrow? And she's watching YouTube, she's going to say, I don't know what the price of Bitcoin is tomorrow. But if I tell her in, in October, is Trump going to win the elections in November? That's something she can place a bet on. And that's what I meant by democratizing trading. 
And then we're going to go with the STOs as well. So we have like all these different lines. It's really trade everything for everything. It's like uh, get a laser sword on on a video game and trade it for a loyalty point from Starbucks or, and uh, so we, we, in the roadmap, there is like um, a lot of technical development and it involves, for example, have is having a synthetic order book. It means everything is traded only against one pair. And uh, when you want to go from one, one asset to another asset, you go through a synthetic order book that is going to do two trades atomically. So we have a lot of these very technical developments in order to uh, make this possible. Is that like an AMM or how does it compare to an AMM? So it, AMM is just a automatic market maker. It's just like an order book that is pre-filled when you, and it uh, makes you like puts a specific amount of assets on the two sides. And there is a curve that is gonna pre-fill the order book. Um, what I'm talking, uh, when I say synthetic order book, it's something that happens in FX when you're in Europe and you buy Tesla stock, maybe the stock is in dollars, but it's being quoted in euros. So your mm -hmm. bank is going to do uh, euro to dollar and dollar to Tesla. So mm -hmm. this, that is, um, that is common in, in stock markets and in banks, uh, in Japan, it's very, very common. They have like these multi-quote order books. So, but we're doing it everything for everything. This is part of the vision. Yeah, and there's hundred other things that we're trying to, to, to do, and you know, so that's why we said like four year roadmap. But we are launching, uh, we are launching in hopefully very very soon, and we will have our our coin that is also powering part of the escrow. Maybe you can explain a little bit about that. Like, why do we need a coin? Because I didn't want to have my own coin in the start. Yeah, we need though. Um... As a, as a technical architect, um, very often customer comes to me for solving a problem and blockchain is not often the right solution. You may just need an API and a user interface and a database. But in our case, we, we are federating a lot of exchange and participants on a single network. And this is where we have our own internal needs for a blockchain. Uh, the main thing being um, industrializing and securing escrow transaction between multiple blockchain and between uh, different parties. Those parties can be two different exchange working with us. Um, so on Openware, we are building exchange and we have thousands of users having installed our platform. Um, and we have ourselves um, at least uh, 50 active exchange uh, who also want to peer traffic with one another. And uh, then on top of this, you can add the marketplace and the service where people need to securely uh, be remitting money to each other uh, through an escrow system. So I would say most of the platform, for example, integrating fiat services in peer-to-peer -peer are using a database system. For example, Binance P2P. Um, and so one of the first thing we are launching and we are using the, the, the blockchain for doing remittance between our party, our fiat merchant and exchanges. So that's the main use case. Uh, and this is where blockchain here was better than a traditional database because we need to work in multiple region. So with a cluster in Asia, in Europe and in North America, I mean in America uh, continent. And so we need to consolidate those accounting database between one another. And we are working on, uh, for example, transaction being emitted from South uh, Africa uh, to Korea, for example. So these are fiat to fiat through crypto. And um, this is where we decided to uh, implement our blockchain here. Cool. It's fascinating. I think it's re re really cool. So Alexis, is this going to be, let's say your, 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 your legacy work? Is this for years and years to come? Or is this you're going to build it once it's there? You know, you continue with being a serial entrepreneur or how do you look at that? I hope my legacy is my kids, but after my kids, <laughs> um, I think my 
I really think uh, we have like uh, just uh, just from the start, the brand yellow, the domain yellow.com, uh, all the the Twitter at yellow, like every single detail that we have got, like, you know, we, we have invested like big from the start without trying to make a lot of noise until our product was not available to deliver. Mm-hmm. And now that it's available to deliver, we have all the contacts with the right marketing agencies with, and we've seen some of our clients, what they've done to succeed, you know, and um, we think it is going to, to make a difference. Uh, and it's going to make a difference in people's life, lives. Uh, in one of the Telegram groups that, that we manage, we have a, a Nigerian guy and he, he, he buys like $10 or $20. He's a student. He buys like $10 or $20 of crypto every month. And that really has changed his life. And this is something that 20 years ago wasn't possible. This guy didn't have access to, to trading or speculation. That was like only left to Wall Street guys. But this guy in Nigeria has made some money. He's paid his studies uh, because he bought some crypto and crypto thankfully went up for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, now we want to push it further. And when I talk further, I'm talking everybody using blockchain, even if they don't know they're using it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a big uh, project involving many companies. We're also getting stakes. So some of these exchanges that are coming to us, uh, we're actually partnering them uh, for, for equity. And the idea is also in the future, once we have like uh, uh, Mexico, Philippines, Indonesia, Turkey, uh, I think we already have South Africa and Australia and Singapore, mm-hmm. and hopefully we can get a few other countries. Once we have all these, all these exchanges in all these countries, we can create a consortium to create a remittance network. And we can, and we can also have like a remittance company with a consortium of exchanges that, you know, uh, we operate or we partner, you know, so we same like Visa is not one company that owns Visa, sure. it's this consortium of banks. So we will have a consortium of, uh, of companies creating remittance and, you know, you want to send money from Philippines to South Africa. So our mechanism will buy instantly will buy, let's say, Ethereum or XRP or Bitcoin or whatever in in Philippines, it's sent uh, automatically to South Africa. In South Africa, it's converted to to South African rand, and it's uh, sent to. This is a huge business compared compared to crypto. Uh, as, so the idea is also getting with Yellow is also and Openware getting this uh, partnership in order to allow all these other exchanges to participate in the future in our in our remittance business, which I think is an important. Uh, use case for blockchain because i'm always looking like let's use a blockchain for something useful it's my main criteria mm-hmm. of investment and i really think that uh, uh, blockchain or any crypto in particular doesn't need to be any special crypto just any crypto any transfer of value is very very good to solve the remittance problem which takes like a few days and 15 percent fees to send money to Africa or Europe or Indonesia or, yeah. Yeah, it's stupid. So m- maybe Alexis and, and also Jürgen and Louis, you can send us some some links for people that want to uh, have, a, have a deep uh, dive into this and maybe get involved so we can put it under the under the video link, which will, will go viral also. That will be mm-hmm. really cool. Yeah, uh, that was all very exclusive, what was communicated. <laughs> All right. <laughs> not, not anymore. So, no, it, it, it's it, but it's not how to say that there's no, no no side where it is like explained like this at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so so maybe Gordon, before we go to the second part of the show, which is usually we we get our we get our attendees involved, they can answer questions. I, I saw something coming in the in the chat box. Is there something unanswered that has been posted in well, the actually, chat box? Let, let, let me let me do one thing real fast. Ishmael, you sorry, I gotta put it. Okay, there you go. Ishmael, unmute, unmute yourself. I'm going to hijack this for a second and take it. So I want to introduce a friend of mine who was kind enough to have me host the panel right before this. And funny enough, because, you know, the way modern chat communications work, Alexis, Jurgen, Nehemia kind of went onto that prior panel. And now that prior panel is a little bit kind of carrying over to this panel. And this is a fantastic organization that I've recently come in contact with. 
So I'm not going to steal the thunder. Just know, give me a favor. Introduce yourself. Introduce the organization you formed. And let's kind of get these two communities joined up. And I just want to give you a shout out and some appreciation. So go for it. Thank you, Gordon. That's very kind of you. And thank you to Sander as well. Some amazing people on there. I'm literally left uh, kind of speechless. And I think it's great just to see the power of uh, relationships and, and networking. I'm a firm believer that we're only as good as the relationships that we have in our lives. Um, I've originally London born with, with a Turkish and a, and a Cypriot uh, heritage. Been in Dubai 10 years. So I've seen the good, the bad and the ugly. I don't believe in utopia. I believe that you need the good, the bad, and the ugly in your life to be able to have a clearer picture of what it is you want to achieve. Um, so from scratch, I've, I've built a network specifically around this, like-minded people, trust, honesty, integrity, the unspoken rules in the world of business and in, uh, ethics, let's say. So through that group now, we're up to about 100 people, uh, core people globally. Um, Gordon helped us achieve that milestone. It wasn't just adding to achieve that milestone. He very much, I felt, was a part of the uh, characteristics and the synergies that we look for. Um, so through, through that persistence in that network, we've been able to cross bridges, co uh, cross borders. Uh, Anna's on this call now as well. Toby's on here, all part of the uh, GC network under, under my company, Lambert and Company, here in the UAE. Um, and the goal for the future is in a nutshell, to, to create these ethical, sustainable approaches towards uh, the future and to leave a legacy of somewhat, you know. Um, Alex has spoke about hopefully his kids being the legacy, and I think that's very much true. We want to leave a better world for, for tomorrow. And I think the bigger picture is maybe lockdown presented us with an opportunity to expedite and, and grow some of those visions and actions that we've been wanting to implement for for a long time so now we have an expedited approach through lockdown we can come together we can create a bit of a future through through the technologies that we're presented with and i think what what personally for me is keen to see the likes of you know i'm seeing these heavy hitters with jürgen and alexis and you know if i heard louis talk a little bit and you, uh, George is on the call again, or Jorge is on the call again. How do we create that bridge between old and new? You know, how do we create something that is a transition from the old world to the new world, where I like to call it? How do we do it in a way where we're working with government, governments, institutions, entities, not being anarchistic, but doing it in a way where we're really uh, creating a foundation for something to take us uh, into the next generation? And I think that's what, that's what excites me knowing that there's people like this out there who are tackling these questions. So maybe a bit of an indirect question that we can address at a later uh, Crypto Wednesday. But thank you very much for the time, Gordon and Sunday. My, my pleasure. Do, do me a favor, put, put a join link for your WhatsApp group into the Zoom chat just so everyone can see it. Sure, I'll do that And now. I, I encourage everyone to like cross germinate. You know. So there's a there's a specific group for our investments and there's a wider group for the club in itself, and that's the GC club. But there's some exciting things going on in the background. We want key people in different parts of the world to be our principal partners. I use the custodian word a lot because I believe we are all custodians of this world and we all hold a hold a button in terms of what it is we want to achieve and achieve in a collective manner. I believe that there's power in numbers and uh I, I use the word powerhouse a lot. I really believe that when people like this come together, it creates a powerhouse. So thank yeah. you very much for that, gentlemen and ladies. And ladies, yeah, got to get them all. Um, so, thank you. So Sandra, was there a question in the chat or should we open it up? No, I think we should, should open it up. And if there's an unanswered question in the chat box, then, then he or she that put it in can, can open, it, open it now. Got it. Well, I, you know, tell you what, I'll, I'll start with the mayor of Dubai. He hates when I call him that, but I'll start with it. George, you there? Yes, I am here. No okay, so this, this is the gentleman I call the mayor of Dubai. Speaking about another group, he runs the Echo X uh, networking event here, and he's very connected. Just, I'll, I'll let himself intro, but he's a good guy. He's really helped me out here. So, George, please. Yeah, uh, I'm George. The, just George is fine. It's okay. Um, I basically help build the blockchain and crypto community in Dubai. I've been doing this for quite a number of years. Um, 
and uh, we have had a relatively good success um, because the community got built slowly. You know, the regulations took their time. Actually, interesting, the regulations moved faster in uh, places like Bahrain and some of the large OTC deals, uh, especially institutional ones, are being done even out of Kuwait uh, as of today. But Dubai, because of its center of attention and because of its uh, popularity and accessibility, um, obviously because of the accord that was signed, has um, grabbed again the center of attention. And uh, a lot of the big events associated with blockchain and crypto are being held in Dubai. So people travel from Saudi, from Kuwait uh, and Qatar now and Oman to, to visit uh, basically Dubai. Um, community is very important because and this is one of the reasons why we created ECOX. ECOX stands for Ecosystem and Connections. So anytime you're trying to create um, a solution and that solution really requires uh, an ecosystem. So if you're doing, for example, real estate or gold tokenization, you need the regulators, you need the financial institutions, you need the blockchain organizations, you need the custodial organizations that you need the insurance partners. And once all these partners come together in an effective way, then you can provide a solution that is of a, you know, institutional grade. Mm -hmm. uh, the good thing about specifically what is happening in Dubai more recently is definitely the MCC, um, ADGM, DIFC uh, have opened up the capability to actually run not just even STOs, but also to run IPOs as well as you know you can run kind of what I would call a mini IPO out of Nasdaq Dubai and um, you can run something that is in the neighborhood of four to ten million dollars and when you reach um, 300 or 400 million you can reach to Nasdaq US so you can call it uh, you know when you're ready for your unicorn then you can move over to a much larger market so I, I do believe that uh, uh, Dubai and the region as a whole is providing a, a very synergetic infrastructure to the success of these projects. The other thing that I think is important, although probably we have not addressed it here, in, in the community in Dubai as well, we have a series of uh, organizations that are helping build the technology. So we have companies like uh, Blockgemini, we have companies like iQubits, and a few others that are actually contributing tremendously to create, for example, these NFT marketplaces and, and enabling uh, the acceleration of the projects uh, by providing cost-effective uh, resources with the right level of knowledge. So it's a pleasure to be here today. And Dallas, again, is there, actually, Alexis and Jürgen and Louis, is there any crossover between what you're doing and this region? Or will there be soon? I think, think we already have labor going on. Day, yeah, myself. Uh... Go ahead. Someone. No, for me, it's like personally, my focus is European market and Asia. So like, I think Louis is the guy who has uh, good connections in the in this region as well in the Middle East. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes. we hear you. Yes. I have two mute buttons, so it's a bit confusing. <laughs> so, uh, yes, I'm planning to be at the end of May in Dubai. Is that for the AIBT summit? I think it is. I just got informed about it. And so I, I just placed it on my planning. So I, I'll i have to check again. All right, very good. So I'm, I'm one of the hosts. So I'll be happy to, to announce you strongly. Great. Do we have any, any client exchanges in Dubai? Yes, we do. Uh, at least four. Four. And some of them should be in Dubai in this period. Interesting. I like how it works. Uh, Tobias or Nehemia, do you want to jump in here and say hello? Yeah, uh, no, I, I had a question, so, you know, uh, on the way um, uh, to presenters. I, I have a question to we, we got to see your video, though, if you're going to talk, so I can see your smiling face. Oh, okay. I, I enable. Oh, just a second. Yeah, Start there you are. So. A uh, question to Alex, because uh, so what, why did you left the JSR actually? Because uh, JSR is 
you know, uh, kind of, you know, walking around me and want to lure me. Uh, and I still kind of, you know, I maybe, maybe see, uh, maybe look for other options. Um, so, you know, what, what you're doing right now, uh, you think it's more um, kind of, it's more novel, it's more novelty there than, uh, you know, reg regular GSR thing, or it's just like personal decision. Uh, so, not related to the, um, to the processes. Yeah, that's, that's an easy one. So um, it went, things went really well with, uh, with Chris and GSR. And um, now it goes even better, you know, and I say, oh my gosh, uh, I wouldn't have sold it. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, we're very, very happy. The, 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 it's, it's a reason of, um, of points of view. So I, I was telling him recently, we're doing two sides of the same coin. So mm -hmm. Chris is the guy from Goldman Sachs, Wall Street, and I'm a software engineer. Mm -hmm. And I, as a, as a Wall Street-like guy, you like to make money with money. And that's what you do. And he does it really well. And he makes people earn money. And he's very good at market making and all these trading strategies. And as an engineer, I like to build things to solve problems and make money. You know, and you can build. Well, that's, uh, that's, that's what uh, well, what stopped me because you know, uh, I, I live in Puerto Rico, and so you know, a lot of Rich Rosenblum here, and uh, so all of them here and like swimming around, and you know, flat, you know, they're very friendly, and uh, they do friendly. But I ask, like, I understand what you're doing, and this is bothering me because if I, you know, if I go I if it's somebody, eight years. I was right. so GSR is Gil, Sirkia, and Rosenblum. So it's the three of us. Yeah. And I was in school with uh, with Chris when we were eight years old, you know, and we went all all school together. We sat together for mm -hmm. many, many years. We were like sitting on no, the same I, 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 uh, Yeah, so, the, the, the question, question question that I ask uh, him, I said, uh, but uh, is novelty. I understand, guys, what you're doing, but I rather go to something that I not have enough neurons to understand. Right, but I see the result. Yeah. So and I said, no, we very much, you know, like you know, meat and potato. I said, okay, well, I'll think about it. So the uh, the yellow that you built, it's you know, it's uh, have you know, my understanding have some novelty. So therefore, yeah, I'm very welcome to you know to to see the documents and pitch deck and yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's. Um... You can't do everything. And once I had made enough money to take care of my kids and my grandkids and my family. So I said, I don't need so much more, you know, I just need a little bit, you know, I have a very simple, small uh, house. I, I, I don't need so much. I drive a Honda Civic. I, I don't need a Rolls Royce, you know. Um, but uh, uh, so I also had a foundation. We helped a lot in Thailand. Mm -hmm. uh, we have with COVID relief. So this is something that fills me more than just making money, but building something that is valuable for humanity. This is a challenge. And this is something that now is within, within my, my hands. And the GSR, I was a little bit tied because there was so much work and it was very focused on. Yeah, it, it was uh, no, again, this is, it, it's more, but it's, um, you know, Again, if it's not the, if it's not bother your mind, and like just a second, let me understand what, what you know. This is new product. This is new technology, and how combined. Then it's interesting, right? So I, I mean, I basically make make a, make my career without any technical background, just to understand and go exactly to things which is I kind of understand, but not really. Right, exactly when you know my first conversation with Vitalik was exactly like uh, this kid is like you know talking nonsense because you know I Bitcoin well and like and he kind of like completely you know, override and as a result I obviously missed because oh if I don't understand and but I kind of feel it and yeah that's that's the thing same thing when the gap start you know decided to to split from uh, you know Vitalik and all of this and and uh, establish at core which is now you know renamed as part it's the same thing uh, so how exactly you you know different from uh, from Ethereum from Vitalik and then 
I didn't get it. Like right now, just, right uh, now th there's I... no, there's no hidden stories. Just uh, things went very well for each of us. And I told Chris, you know, I've, I've got enough. I'd like to do what I like, uh, start my foundation, help people, mm -hmm. and uh, and work on on building things. Well, this is I what think I it, and yet it, was already like it was. It, it didn't need any more building, and it okay, had gone so, to a level that okay, you know. Wait, I thought wait, it was. Me, good. I, I'm gonna pause you. You guys no. connect. You guys talk. It was interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's not. It's not. No, I, think, I think this is more. I, I, I don't be, uh, 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 oh, one more thing, one more thing. I, th I thought I, I was a good football player until I met Messi. This is what happened as well, you know. <laughs> we started hiring all these uh, all these stars, you know, and I say, wow, what am I doing in, in Barcelona? I'm just an amateur football player. Uh, so yeah. anyway, uh, we will talk. You, you will be in Dubai right now, right? In uh, in May. Well, Lewis will be here in May. And I'll try to convince the to come. Fifth or sixth, I, I, I didn't check uh, tickets, but fifth and sixth, I will be already there. So we can drink some mezcal. I'll bring it like a lot. Yeah. Well, then, okay, then do me a favor. Bring me some monkey shoulder because I'm, I'm dying without my monkey shoulder. Mm. Mm -mm. I can do the monkey shoulder. No. Okay, good. Louis, bring, no. bring monkey shoulder and we'll have, we'll have a Crypto Wednesdays like, you know, re rendezvous. Uh, mm. let, let, let me shift. Uh, Tobias, I see. Uh, you want to jump in? Tobias, Tobias, or my friend Ahmed, I, I see you there. Or Yanush, or Mark, or Anna. I'm, a, I'm uh, opening up the floor. I can speak. Okay, but you, you, can, you can speak, but we need to see your face so we know you're real and not a deep fake, or deep fake voice. Deep fake, yeah. Can you turn on video? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's early morning in Toronto, but Anna's no, normally okay. up early for these calls. Uh, it's early morning in Puerto Rico. I it's before 7 a.m., guys. So I've been on the previous meeting, <laughs> and I joined this one just because I like the way Gordon was carrying on the conversation. There is so much energy that even if someone is tired, it feels after the way you speak like having 10 coffees, so I've been charged. <laughs> so yeah. thank you for- I'm human Adderall. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for sending the link to this conversation sure, because it's a very interesting one. And definitely uh, when it comes to blockchain, we can speak for hours. So just to briefly introduce myself, I have a financial background. However, by the Gallup Institute, mm -hmm. when I've done the test, I've been considered a storyteller and the catalyst. So here you have like how storytelling and the catalyst can fit into um, into the finance. I think you you can guys have um, figured it out. But at the same time, a few years ago, like it's it's around six years ago, I started my uh, adventure with blockchain. But that was because of the financial industry, financial technology, and everything what was pertaining to fintech. And just one thing took me to another. And I started to learn about blockchain on my own a lot. And then I decided there is time to step into university course just to have everything summarized and find out what else I need to learn. So because I have a European background, but I live in Toronto, Canada, so I have an exposure to North America. I love actually hearing people from different parts of the world because I can see the differences and at the same time similarities when it comes to innovative technologies and approaches um, towards this technology in the world. So definitely I've seen um, a few questions when there was like about NFTs and everything uh, as well, just um, the opinions about it. And there's definitely, there are hypes and the trends, but I think the bottom line when it comes to the technology itself, it represents a, a huge value. And this is something what I also talked um, with previous panelists before the, the talk that definitely um, the governments and the bigger institutions are very much also interested in it. So there's a, an industry with a, with a huge, huge potential and possibilities. And it's like definitely about tapping into um, certain solutions, small solutions and um, 
and having this um, you know um, grown. So definitely, it's going to be an exciting decade ahead of us until 2030, as they saying. And it's going to be, you know, like a little bit of the roller coaster as well with everything. But at the same time, um, it pushes our buttons and get us going and, uh, and learn more and experiment more and possibly find the best solutions ever. I like it. I like it. I like it. Uh, do you have a question for our? Do you have a question for our panelists? And I agree with everything you said. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, I would love to actually ask the question when it comes. I, I've noticed that people are talking about those NFTs, and and I would like to combine that with the uh, with um, with blockchain because, like, it seems to me that yes, everything is on blockchain, but NFTs are starting to do a separate trade and it's, it's more pertaining to art. So how this actually a development of NFTs can refer to the future development of blockchain? Is it any connection or should we actually consider this as two separate uh, channels? Mm, basically NFT is just a uh, application on which uses blockchain. So like, you know, like, yes. uh, <laughs> So, so how do you see them different? It's an interesting perspective of you. Yes, well, I'm seeing them different just because the, when, when you're looking at NFTs, it doesn't really bring, bring any value in the development of blockchain. To, um, it's not pertaining to development of the technology. It's a just pure use of the technology and, mm -hmm. um, and, and used in the in a certain direction, but the, the question is, will this will this train to some degree will survive as well? Because um, there is a lot of questions pertaining to NFTs and also originality of it. And even if someone has this URL, it doesn't. What if something will disappear? So is it really kind of a trend? Which yes, it's based on the on, on blockchain. But then it's going to completely disappear or or be um, find out as you know, not really kind of valid. Mm. That, that, that's actually a very good question. You need to understand that, like uh, at the moment, the term NFT is very broadly used, and uh, there are no guidelines which is really considered. As I said, there are open, some of the platforms are issuing NFTs where you basically have part of the resources can get lost. You know what I mean? As exactly as you said. Uh, the question is more or less uh, how to explain it. NFT is a use case for blockchain. So we will not get adoption like, like Louis was saying as well. Remittance is a use case for blockchain. So, and uh, for example, if you were seeing like uh, NBA Top Shots, I don't know if you hear about that, which is where they are selling the digital collectibles uh, about the moments of famous basketball players. So most of the people who are utilizing or how to say that, are playing this game or whatever you call it, they are not familiar with the term blockchain at all. So it's like for you, if you, you know, websites needing, they're needing servers, but no one cares where your website is. Sorry. Sorry, just, Inush, I, I think you have background noise. No, it's not me. Inush. Okay. Good thing okay, you're, you're it's assume it like, like like this the blockchain technology is a technology layer where something is built on top yes yes so and then nfts is a use case which is built built on top of the blockchain so it doesn't you know like, like it's like let's say this way blockchain is like your aws server but if you visit your website you don't care where it is hosted and so like as well, people should not really know that there's blockchain used. If someone maybe in five years is remittance, making a remittance from Indonesia to South Africa, he would not know that his transaction was running through blockchain. It was just doing what it should do. You know, that, that this, this idea, is, don't get me wrong, like everyone in your space, like blockchain, 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 like no one cares about if there's blockchain involved or not. Don't get me wrong, all the audience here. The blockchain yeah, needs to agree. be... A, it's like, do you care that there's a TCP IP protocol? Do you care that there, there are Cisco servers involved that we can have Skype, uh, uh, like a Zoom call now? No, you don't care. You just want to use it. And this is exactly what I'm thinking. And like, like for me, it's like since years, we have 
this uh, this completely misalignments in the industry. You know, like like we are talking about billion dollars, million dollars uh, companies which have a user adoption, which is like barely 10,000 or 20,000 users. That's like back in the internet days, you know, it that was not caring, like companies were not measured based on how much users they're having. And we are now entering the space where, you know, like no one cares what blockchain basically is in the end, as long as it does what it should do. And this is what I think uh, is, the, is for me the next challenge is like, yes, there is a technology challenge, but please don't underestimate in this industry, there's a lot of talk about technology, which is great, but the general person on the street doesn't care uh, what technology is. The general person in the industry, or the, the general person who, for example, trades on Binance, they don't know anything about blockchain. They just know a token goes up or a token goes down. They would trade literally, and some people hate it if I say it, they would literally trade horseshit or dog shit if they can trade horseshit or dog shit. <laughs> Because they don't care about anything. That their only purpose is here. I put in ten thousand dollars and I make twenty thousand dollars. This is what they care. They don't care about what technology is, what is coming, uh, how, how it is changed, or anything like this. You know, please don't get me wrong. If I'm using their like very strong words, but sometimes you need to use strong words words to wake up people. And for me, you're, like you're, NFT, you're so edgy. I don't know. I, I like it though. No, it's. But uh, I, I agree. I think uh, NFT is really a technical term for us industry participants, uh, but the user, the end user of the, of the NFT will have no idea that this is backed by an NFT technology. No. It, for example, just... me, I, I see it more into the online e-commerce industry where we will have more and more NFT to identify products. Uh, but this is going to be underlying infrastructure, mostly um, to um, manage, you know, fakes and original articles and having authenticity. Uh, but in the end, it's going to be from online store to mobile app. But you're never going to see an NFT. You're never going to yeah. own uh, one or go in uh, uh, your MetaMask to look at your NFTs. Uh, it, it's Just... basically like imagine it like this way. Uh, your invoice, ha, ha, so we are in the digital age now. And if, if I send you an invoice from a company, what do you need to do? You need to print out the invoice, give it into accounting system and everything is going on. For example, imagine like uh, it sounds now a little bit crazy for some people maybe, but if you're sending me a kind of an NFT, which is saying, okay, this is the work I have done and it's lying here. Please pay me here the money. Then you get the work which is done. So basically you have the invoicing, the accounting and everything automatically done. So what you need to understand this whole, like what we are building here, or what, what the long-term vision is, is, is a completely interconnected uh, network. And to roll it back, you know, we are in the age of like, like the last 10 years was about digitalization, which was meaning I bring online videos, sound uh, pictures, and I can transfer them Im immediately, instantaneously, globally. But for example, if you want to buy now a property in Paris, can you do this online? No, you can't. Just imagine like with something like an NFT, assuming your property rights would be digitally, uniquely identified on the blockchain as an NFT. You go to some online website where you literally basically uh, see like, uh, how to say it, different flats and you can buy that flat on that online site immediately and the ownership gets transferred to you as an NFT. So this is a very like futuristic scenario, but to be honest, this is not that far away. It's maybe like uh, five to 10 years away. And this is what, what you need to understand, what you're seeing here, like, so, so, like, like in the art world as well. It's like have the question is like, like Bebbles, like $73 million for digital artwork is questionable. I personally, I'm deep into NFTs, but I would have preferred a serious art collector buying this work for only $3 million would have given me more reputation than, sorry for saying it, some people who want to show off in the industry that they have more money than other ones. You know, like they were bidding up like from 10 million to 20 million. Like this is like, sorry for saying it, this is like, uh, I don't want to use the terms, but uh, showing off, simple as it says. Right. So for me, so, this is, I'm sorry? Right. So you actually mentioned about NFTs being used for purchasing of the property. So 
will NFTs be a tool for tokenization of the industry of various industries? Yes. So, so, so NFTs are basically a tool for tokenization of unique assets. So like uh, in, in an extreme case, like uh, each product has its unified identifier, which is always to do a digital companion. You know, like in, in the art world, you have, uh, let's say if you buy like a famous artwork, you have a certificate of ownership. And if you want to sell it and you do not have that certificate of ownership from uh, Banksy or so, your artwork is worthless. Uh, and it's exactly like this in the future, for example, you can imagine like uh, you have your phone but that phone is also the, like a digital comp uh, companion on the blockchain. And if you like, like how or, or how can you prove to me now you own your car? You can't prove. Be honest, you, you can't even prove that this is your phone. Only because there's your picture, you not really can pr prove this is your phone. So this is like a concept which uh, which is like, like uh, in the very early days of development. And as you see, or it's, it's a lot of people not think that far on a product level. They're only like, okay, let's build basic infrastructure. This is what we're building at the moment. But you need to think what, what is leading. And uh, like things which we were seeing now with uh, the NFT space, this was the first time people were coming into the space, which has nothing to do with blockchain and which has nothing to do with trading. So friends of mine, which are designers, they don't know that there's Binance. They just know they can sell uh, their artwork digitally online. They don't care about the underlying technology. And this is like, for me, like, like, the whole NFT space is bringing a complete new set of people into the industry, which are using their technology, but don't really care about the price of cryptocurrency, don't really care on which blockchain it is running. They just care about that it's easy to use Apple and understandable for everyone. Uh, hold on. Sorry? Uh, Anna, sorry about that. I, I muted you just because there, there's some feedback happening that seemed to stop when I... But now, now I'm mute. Okay, go ahead. So, uh, yeah, so just one, the one more question pertaining sure, to it. Uh, so that, does this mean that NFTs are being used as the first, like a first time product when the, when the technology is being used in the background without people um, wanting to understand, knowing about it, because this is something what I've been speaking about, that eventually blockchain will become a technology, like nobody will be asking about. That's the same thing we send in email. Nobody actually asks, do you have an internet? Nobody talks about, you know, uh, uh, pertain, you know, like the technological stuff pertaining to internet, right? Is this um, NFT right now a, a part, a bridge toward towards um, the use of the of the blockchain technology without really kind of thinking about it. Yeah, let's assume it. I don't know why I'm asking, but maybe I try to, is it better? You know, it's weird. It's like when you're, getting, when you're speaking and Anna's not muted, it, it, be back. So Anna, forgive me. I'm going to mute you just yeah, so yeah. the audio is okay. Yeah, okay. yeah do. Okay, no, well, Jürgen, go ahead. What the issue is, is basically like this. Uh, sorry, I forgot another thing. That the NFTs is like, uh, like, like, you know, like, like I see NFTs like as a, as a container, like, you know, on, on the internet, there is something like chatback file or a GIF file or uh, a, a video file. And then an, and, and a video file is just a specific container which is doing something specifically. And this is the same NFT, it's just one element in this and it's a use case which allows things to do in a very easy and convenient way yep all right um perfect so i'm gonna work, move on to mark mark happy to have you hi there uh, i was i was just going to vent a bit and, uh, and say something about the legacy power of existing systems so we we just raised some money but but this is really about the banks and um, most people in crypto in the UK have to use what's called challenger banks, people operating under slightly different banking licenses. And at the moment, what's happening is every time anyone makes a transaction from a normal bank to a challenger bank, the bank puts it into security. They get a phone call. They say, do you really want to send this money? Um, so, you know, I mean, that's, that's the banks kind of um, protecting their market share from challenger banks. But, you know, I mean, it's a huge opportunity for DeFi. Uh, and I don't have a particular kind of view on DeFi. But 
there, there's a lot of pain going on. And I, I know another company that's had a couple of bank accounts closed recently because they moved money from a crypto exchange to their bank account. Um, and one of those banks was actually a challenger bank. It wasn't even a top tier bank. So, you know, that there's a lot happening that's pain points for people. And, you know, DeFi needs to really have solutions that are very simple for people to use so that people can use them, people who would just use a normal bank account. Because we, we have people investing in us who aren't sophisticated necessarily. Um, that they want to invest in an idea, but but they they find it difficult to go to an exchange, buy Bitcoin, do the whole bit. So I mean, that that was my two cents. People are finding it difficult to invest in crypto. The banks are protecting their position, not not just from crypto, but also from other people who are challenging their position as banks. Um, so the legacy systems have a lot of power. Mm. I agree on that, that they have a lot of power, but the question is for, foremost, like, you know, I explained, it, it's also the big barrier to invest in options and futures. So the traditional financial market has also the barriers if you not understand what you're doing. I mean, like, I think the intention is not that, for me personally, the intention is not that 99% of the population is going now and trading on Binance. That's not what this is about. And I think this is also the, what people misunderstand I mean, for me, it's sorry for saying it, and some people hate me for this, most likely. But it's ridiculous that the most centralized entity like Coinbase and Binance are celebrated as the most successful companies in the crypto industry, which is, has nothing to do with crypto per se, besides their traders, you know, their trading platforms. It has nothing to do with the core idea behind all of this. But okay, this is how it is. I mean, we need to be honest. We need a money market, and we are happy to have a money market because... An industry which has its only money market engine is not reliable on the existing infrastructure. So I have time to build something up on my own. And uh, will be people in the future, I mean, how to explain that uh, if you talk about Europe or so, banks will go digital and banks are digital. And uh, this thing with challenger banks and the traditional banks, I mean, that's going on because they're afraid of. Imagine you're talking to an insurer, a normal life insurance uh, company at the moment, the average age of their customer is like 50 plus. So you know why? Because all the younger people, either they don't even have a life insurance or if they are, their challenger bank is selling them a life insurance. Like on Revolut, you buy your life insurance. So this is there's a complete different shift in change. You know, like how often I have been at my life in a bank and have talking with a banker? No, never. I don't need that. If I, if I buy something, I can buy it on my own. I can inform myself. I think a whole generation is you know, like, if I'm a traditional bank, I'm still not afraid. And to be honest, uh, they, 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 they also do very big in that industry. They also do not just want their retail customers to run into this. You know, like uh, let's say about standard DeFi, if in DeFi you can get a fairly stable uh, return of invest of five to 10% a year, that's like a killer for all the savings accounts globally, just as an example. Do you, do you think that's sustainable? Uh, you mean the high APY on uh, USDD or yes, something like this? High APY. Uh, technically, it's not sustainable because at the moment it's mispriced. But if you know how the normal financial market works, uh, there's definitely more in them, which is now offered to retail. Okay, so even when it corrects, you're asserting that it will still be higher than the retail rates of return. Yeah, well, it's the retail rate. If I, if I have my bank lying uh, in Europe on a bank, it's minus two. Literally. Okay, okay, well, I guess that means it has to be higher. <laughs> or if it's zero, it's higher. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, like I think in Switzerland, like in Austria, like at the moment, like uh, I have a small savings account still there. I think uh, there's nothing. You get zero interest, 0 0.02 or whatever, you know, like it's like completely, how to say that, like there's no incentivation. Like, like the, the, if, you know, 0.02 is almost worse than negative two because they're just kind of like playing with you. So, yeah, this is what I mean. It's like, like it's not worth the ink it's printed, most likely. But you know, for, and, and be honest. I mean, if you talk about the traditional financial system, they're not really need retail. Retail is basically a, a limp on them. Like if you talk with the Credit Suisse or a Deutsche Bank, they don't like their retail business. It's like like a minimum 
you know, like, like if we talk about banks, it's a completely different discussion, but financial institutes, they don't care what retail is doing. Retail is like a fraction of the whole uh, money they are moving around. Right. And I mean, um, there's... The... Sorry, let, let me switch to Marco. Mar Marco, thank you for joining us. Our perennial favorite guest slash speaker slash collaborator. So. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you, Gordon. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I, I've, I've, I, I apologize for missing some of this, uh, and I, but I've caught the last half hour, and uh, I've been, I've been chuckling to myself uh, around the whole NFT discussion uh, because there's so much of our legacy mindsets that we bring, and whether we mean to or not, uh, from the pre-crypto era that that really you, you need to sort of stop yourself and say, wait a minute, no, 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 that's old think. I need to figure out what the new think is. If you go back, and I, I mentioned this in the chat, fundamental principles. Humanity as a society has existed because we all have a database that we trust. And it wasn't SQL Server. Initially, it was a book with pen and ink, right? But that was a database that people trusted and it sat at a bank or it sat at a trusted market maker uh, sitting in the souk, uh, who was the guy you went to to say whether or not your crops were going to be worth enough that you could buy the buy some uh, fertilizer or whatever. Um, the, mo the mode of recording the database has changed. It's gone digital. Now it's gone to immutable blockchain, which is an improvement because immutable databases are more inherently trustable. Whether you're throwing on there a cryptocurrency or an NFT is immaterial. They're the same thing. If you look at the code, it's simply a record in the database. This is owned by that guy. That guy being some ridiculously long string of gobbledygook that is your key. And the only way you can and the, the, you prove ownership because you've got the, the other key that, that can unlock that. What, you, what value you assign to that record in the database is consensus-based, as it has always been consensus-based. Grain is worth this much today. Uh, tomorrow it might be worth more or less. And we do the same thing with this, with this world we're moving into, which is we assign value subjectively. And that comes back to the basic principle of price discovery. Two parties agree on the price, but they disagree on the value. The seller believes it's worth less. The buyer believes it's worth more. But Wait, the price Mark, is Mark, set. I, I got to stop you. That was, that was a beautiful sentence that I want to capture so I make sure I understand it. They, disagree, they agree on the price, but they disagree on the value. And, what what and, he talks about, there's a price and there's value, but it's not the same. That's... That's why I love Marco. Okay, that that just oh, that just attached a couple of neurons yeah. that weren't attached before. But sorry for interrupting. Keep going. That is that is the that is the fundamental principle of price discovery in any market. Whether it's a two guys standing in front of a rug deciding how much the, the, they're going to sell or buy for, or it's on the on the on exchanges. Now, when we talk about things like Binance and Coinbase, those are bridges between the old insecure database and the new secure database. And they are the only point of regulation you have from a traditional governmental database perspective. And people, generally speaking, as, as everyone points out, don't care about blockchain, don't care about SQL Server or tandem servers that are nonstop, shoot a bullet through it and it keeps working. They don't care because they just trust the database. And the database is the US government, or the database is Chase Manhattan, or Deutsche Bank, or the, or the Swiss government. They trust the database and therefore conduct their, their transactions appropriately. And as long as everybody else is also trusting the database, everything's good. What falls awry, of course, is that when the database turns out to not be trustable, say the Fed, for example, <laughs> you can't trust the Fed to actually keep its records clean. It just keeps piling on more, more records in the database without anybody sort of saying, wait, wait a minute. Uh, why are you adding those records? Where's the value coming from? Uh, we didn't negotiate price discovery on the US dollar when you added 1 trillion to its balance sheet. <laughs> um, 
these are all things that we're going to be getting away from as we move to immutable databases where you can no longer just mint money without having ha a direct and immediate impact on the globally perceived value of that database. Does that make sense? Uh, it does. Jürgen, Alexis, do you want to comment? Oh, no, no, I'm agreeing with it. But... I, 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 I agree in the recent history, but before that, people did not have third party trust. And in the West, when I had a title deed, this was my land and I didn't have, and, and if I gave you the title deed, this was your land, this was a sort of NFT we already had. And people had gold or silver or coins or shells or whatever, and you know, we, we gave them to each other. There was not a bank to keep a, a tally on how many, uh, how many banks. So I think we're actually going back to- well, There was a land registry. Well, I think I think he's asserting maybe there wasn't. Like, are you yeah. saying that deeds were bearer yeah. instruments? Yeah, actually, yeah, the deeds were a bearer instrument. There was no land registry. I mean, there was somebody that was going to do the deed for you the first time, but there was no registry. They didn't keep a copy of the deeds in the past. Uh, only later, only later, they realized that yeah, people are faking no, the, deeds. There was maybe but, something like consensus or like like if my neighbor says it's your land and all the other neighbors says it's your land, it's most likely your it, land. It, it, it had something to do with the seal, you know, it had the seal that you could fake or something. But then, you know, if you were caught faking the seal, you... So there was third party yeah. trust in the seal. I guess there was uh, there was somebody that put the seal, you know, uh, and uh, this was your title deed. But I mean, the thing is that there wasn't third party trust on the storage of... Uh, of the title deed or i mean i had my title deed i gave it to you it the land is yours and i think we're going back to this model with nfts like you know we're going to have like an immutable thing that does your land and with gold it was the well, same blockchain had... period not not just nfts blockchain in, in total is is self-custody so yes you're right we're so, we're going back there yeah i think uh I think you, when you said like historically, there's always been like no. I, I think it's I think it's recent history. I think uh, originally people are non-trusting beings by nature, and only when they were forced to trust the kings or the or the governors, otherwise they were killed. Uh, so I think that's when that's when third-party trust became a thing. I I think that. You know, I mean, we're, we're probably trusting in smaller groups. It's when you scale it up to society that you get that level of distrust, you know. I mean. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Well, the competing parties, you've got the problem of uh, who's got the biggest guns. Uh, always a problem in any situation. And, and it's, it doesn't change with blockchain. I don't care how secure your blockchain is. Someone puts a gun to your head and says, transfer your tokens. You're going to transfer your tokens. <laughs> and the only difference is, is that rather than being able to go to a bank and say, I want you to transfer everybody's tokens to me, you now have to go individually to each person and say, I want you to transfer your tokens to me, and then I want you to transfer your tokens to me. So it, it is a more secure model because the ownership is completely decentralized. It is not, there, are, there is no um, clearinghouse you can go to to take advantage of the system. Unless, of course, you leave the Binances and the Coinbases in place, in which case they get hacked and then same problem. Uh, I totally disagree on security. I think it's a less secure. Like we, we have reintroduced a problem we had in the far west of kidnapping and people being like shot for their gold, you know. Uh, this is the far west again. Re uh, how do you, why would you say that? I isn't that already the problem? It's been the problem for centuries. No, actually, credit cards we remove that problem. The the money's in the bank, and that's it. You don't. And they don't... put a gun to your head and say, "Transfer it." Yeah, that that's that's what the system helps you with. You know, it's not going to be so easy to transfer. They're going to ask all these invoices. They're going to ask these proofs. They're they're not going to just transfer a million dollars without like proof that it's going to the right people for a for a proper service. And this is something that society, but. I think there's a fix coming. It's called the centralized custody. It's going to fix that, but we're not there yet. Uh, but yeah, uh, custody, it, it's, it's a problem. The same problems we had before with 
title deeds uh, that were stolen or were broken. Uh, and uh, I mean, like removed, you know, and then people were just building on your own land and you, you couldn't prove it was your land or gold, you know? So we are having these problems again. Well, that's, this is, this is one of the things that's uh, being solved effectively by digital identity. If, if you make a, your, your ecosystem for transfers of funds uh, require a unique identification for every user, not a, not a public one, not one that could be so sort of traced back to a social profile or anything like that, just a unique identifier for all users of, of, of the do transactions, and you make the transaction database public, but not the, not the information about who's, who's who, you end up in a world where putting a gun to my head and asking me to send you my coins, I can still do that, but now there's a public record that I sent you my coins and I can turn around to law enforcement, unless of course you kill me and say that transaction was under duress. But can't they have just gone to someone else? And of course else? we know who you are because I can't, I can't send the tokens to somebody who isn't already registered on the system as identified. But can't Mark, they have gone to what, someone what else, say? put a gun to their head and say, what's your ID? Give me your ID, and then effectively have kidnapped two people, and you transfer it to the kidnapped person, and then they disappear, and they're off with the money anyway. I, I like well, how the, the, it doesn't stop the transaction from happening. Okay. You no, know, it, it does. It doesn't stop the transaction from happening. The problem being is that the per, even if they steal your ID. Unless they kill you, they're going to have to uh, deal with the, the, the fallout of you now going to the system and saying this identity has been compromised at this date and time and all transactions thereafter should be suspended. Uh, and the ones that happened during this period should be investigated. And because you can't interact with a system of this nature without being uniquely identified. So yeah, they've stolen I mean, your they, identity they, they, and done what? Bought a few things and then they're stuck because the, that identity no longer works. The transactions are all recorded. They can't transfer your balances to themselves because then that's on the record. Comments? But, but then haven't you got a centralized record of all transactions and all people? which is the very thing decentralized record people, of all transactions and all people yes well but if, if it's all public if it's all public and you know who everyone is and no no all public you know all the transactions that the identity component is private like chasse uh, what's it called uh private but chasse okay. secret like i don't know who you are but i know that you are someone yeah yeah Exactly. I don't know who so you are, but I know that you are called. uniquely identifiable in the network. Yep. Yeah, I but guess. it's also it's not not one hundred percent proof because I can have multiple identities. So if they transferred it to someone, I can actually show you a model. I can show you a model where you can't, but uh, <laughs> uh, that's a very deep discussion. <laughs> uh, your your DNA, basically, you need to verify your DNA. Maybe let's transfer to Alexis because Alexis, I, I think you were ready to, to comment on one of the, the comments being made. Yeah, I guess this is how um, this uh, currency is made by governments. I forgot the, the term for it. C something um, like Central the, Bank Digital Currency. Central, 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 Central Bank Digital Currency. Yeah, I guess this is Central Bank Digital Currency models where they have identified people and everybody and government is happy and everybody's controlled but you know i still think they bring value yeah it's not a bad idea it's basically the compromise between they're an excellent world. transition object they're, they're an excellent transition object to moving to a fully decentralized global currency get all the governments on 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 digital first then co-op their their currencies by using them as a basis to build a decentralized global currency. Okay, guys, you know what I'm gonna do? It's an awesome conversation. You all connect. And I think I think my head's spinning. Sound are we good? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're really good. I, I think we're we're close. I'm doing timeout because it was awesome and I want to end on a high note. So.
already a lot of text messages in the telegrams and on LinkedIn and uh, on the WhatsApp was was going on. So that's really really good that people connect and reach out to each other. Yes. Um, so that was really cool. So maybe as a, as a final wrap up, Gordon, is there anything still on your plate that you want to put on the on the plate of Jurgen and or Alexis? Just guys, you know, it was a long time coming. We've been in discussions for a while. I think you wanted to pause while Yellow was getting up and running and you've obviously done really good work and are doing really neat stuff. So I'm glad we were finally able to get you on the show and you two, or you three with Luis also, you're a dynamic trio and we know you're busy. We know it's a different time zones and, you know, thanks for making the time. It's just very appreciated. That's it. I'm really, really excited to, to learn more in the upcoming weeks and months. So maybe as a, as a, as a general wrap up. So thanks everybody for being on the call. If you watch a recording, that's really cool. Uh, to our guest, Jürgen and Alexis, thank you, uh, my friends, for taking some time out of your busy days to, uh, to be here and to be part of the, the community. So thanks for that. And for now, Gordon, that's... And, 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 I'm sorry, I got to give huge credit to our guests. I mean, you, you all know who you are. You can see each other's names, but, you know, Anna, Nehemia, Marco, you know, everyone who spoke, you know, it's just awesome. Awesome dialogue. Really appreciate it. Next week... I'm not sure the guest is, but next week we're going to be on Crypto Wednesday's number 25. 25. 25. So we're going to be a quarter century old. Sort of. So anyways, cool. join us. <laughs> yes? Cool. All right. Thanks, Gordon. Thanks, Thank everybody, for being on the show. And thanks again, Jürgen and Alexis, for being our guest today. I really appreciate oh. it. Thank you, guys. Talk Thank to you all soon.